Fighting in the town of Sake in eastern DRC, a Reuters reports a rocket landed near university in the DR Congo city of Goma today as thousands more civilians fled a fresh advance by M23 rebels. No casualties were reported, but the violence threatens to isolate the strategic urban hub in the violence ridden east of the country. For more on the situation, uh, earlier on I reached reporter Jaffa Al Katante in Goma. Hi, Jaffa. Okay, the situation still complicated. Till now, people are still fleeing, leaving Sake coming in Goma. Since early morning, according to people I talked to, it was 5.30 when M23 launched an attack on FRDC position. And as fighting was in the city of Sake, local of Sake decided to leave. And all the after the before noon from that time to like 2 p.m. Goma time, IDPs were coming from Sake to Goma. All roads were really full of IDPs. People walked 27 kilometers with their kids, with their babies, and some of them with just a mattress and some food and others with nothing. Do we know the number of casualties in that place in the fighting? At the moment, it's difficult to know because the government is not controlling 100% of Sake and M23, uh, not two. Uh, but according to the local civil society, two explosions killed some people and injured a lot of them. One rocket of M23 landed in a market, killed many people. And I saw many ambulances passing in the way from Sake to Goma bringing wounded people in Goma Hospital. But at this moment, we can't know the real number or the record of the casualties. So at this time, who is in control of Sake? Is it the M23 rebels or the government is trying to push them out? Right now, there is like five minutes ago, uh, the FRDC, the Armed Forces of the GRC, just made a statement saying that they take back the control of Sake. But in the morning, rebels control it. But the situation is still uh, complicated. Uh, we can't say who controls Sake, except FRDC say they have the control of the city. And I must add also that two rockets from Sake landed in Goma, and FRDC said there was M23 rockets. One of them landed close to Goma University without touching or making any victims. And another one, it was in the market, but as it was early morning, there was no one in that market. So the two rockets didn't produce any victims. Uh, Sake is not very far from Goma. It's very near. How is the situation in Goma itself? Are the armed forces in control? Uh, for sure, Sake is the last city before Goma because there is only 25 kilometers between Sake and Goma. And Sake is for the FRDC, the last position uh, to protect Goma. That's why he, people here in Goma was also under a big panic because if the M23 controls Sake, that means the last point will be Goma and there will be a fighting in Goma. And people here in Goma, especially neighborhoods of Lakver and Mugunga, which are in the west of the city of Goma, close to uh, Virunga National Park, uh, people was afraid. And I saw even people in Goma uh, preparing themselves to leave in case Saki fails. For the first time, I saw uh, MONUSCO, FRDC, and SADEC soldiers working together in order to stop the a progress of M23. That was reporter Jafal Katante in Goma speaking with me from there. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres warned Wednesday that the world has entered an age of chaos that is causing a multitude of suffering and threatening progress and must be reversed. There is so much anger and hate and noise in our world today, the Secretary General told member states as he laid out his priorities for 2024 every day and every turn, it seems, it's war. He said 
People just want peace and security and to live their lives with dignity. For millions of people caught up in conflict around the world, life is a deadly, dairy hungry hell, he said. He pointed to conflicts in Gaza, Ukraine and Sudan, but also protracted situations in Myanmar, Yemen, Haiti and across Africa's Sahel. If countries fulfilled their obligations under the UN Charter, every person's right to a life of peace and dignity would be guaranteed. He noted, but he said the Charter is regularly being thrumped with impunity. The United Nations Security Council, the primary platform for questions of global peace, is deadlocked by geopolitical fissures, he said. This is not the first time the council has been divided, but it is the worst, he said. The dysfunction is deeper and more dangerous today than even during the Cold War years. Divisions among the council's five veto welding permanent members, Britain, China, France, Russia and the United States, have blocked meaningful action on a, member of situa on a number of situations, including the wars in Ukraine and Gaza, as well as enforcing sanctions against bad actors like North Korea and the military junta in Myanmar. He said, the council must undergo serious reform to reflect today's realities, including adding a permanent seat for Africa. Guterres also called for reform of the international financial system, noting that the world's poorest countries are drowning in debt. And he urged people to make peace with the planet and stop waging a war with nature. Antonio Guterres also pointed to modern challenges, including the rapid spread of misinformation and disinformation, as well as the need to ensure artificial intelligence is used to benefit humanity. AI will affect all humankind, so we need a universal approach, he said.